How's it going, family? We are back, and I got to tell you what, it is going to be an interesting day. For those that don't know, make sure you take advantage of the Moomoo link down below. Let's get into that. Get yourself six free stocks. No, make that nine free stocks if you use my link. You don't get the six, you'll get an additional three. Put $100 or more in there. Click the link. Take advantage of it. You'll get nine free stocks worth up to $20,000. Take advantage of it. Have everybody in the house do this. Don't leave free money on the table. And I do want to do some shout outs to start out. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, if you have not done this, all you got to do is subscribe down below, leave a comment. Let me know what is your best stock today and where you're from. And we'll talk about that. So put that down in the comments and just say hi. You can just say hi. I always like a little friendliness out there. Uh, shout out to KW, Donna Hale. Double Up TV, Brad Brown, and David Lee. I wanted to make sure I threw a couple shout outs out there. I appreciate the comments and I look forward to more. Let me know. I always wonder if people out there actually hear the shout outs I do back to the community to give thanks for you being a part of this. And yeah, once in a while we find out and they say, yeah, I saw, I heard it. All right, here we go. Take a look at it today. What's happening? The markets are a little bit red, not too bad. I was expecting to see a turn we did in the beginning and then all of a sudden we saw a <laughs> we saw what you can hear in the background if you can hear old tesla cat meow and he just like everyone else did not enjoy the market today so it started out pretty decent comes back down the vix drop though which is good but i do got good news in this video so this video is going to be one of them ones where you can listen we can hear some of the things uh, new fed members are coming out saying as well as some new news on the inflation front, which is hap uh, happily good. And so we're going to talk about that as we move forward. Now, if you don't know, we have a live stream tonight, 7 o'clock Eastern. I have Keenan Grace and Stock Up with Larry Jones stopping over. So uh, I'll try. I think I'll put the link down below in the description. If you'd like to join us, make sure you stop over at that time. But we got some good things going on. Let's Let's hit out there. We're going to start this one with the inflation is starting to drop like a rock, leading to deflation in certain areas of the economy, Fundstrat says. So I've been saying this and saying it and saying it. Do not be surprised if we hit a period of deflation and we could see that. And so you hear it. It's not just dropping. Certain areas, inflation is starting to drop like a rock rather than a feather, according to Fundstrat's Tom Lee. And we are starting to see massive drops in certain prices. Not everything, of course, but certain things. Lee observed outright deflation in some areas of the economy, suggesting that inflation is less sticky than perceived. And for those wondering, and uh, we'll look at the last part here, stock market investors are looking for a cool down inflation as it would allow the Fed to ease its rate of trajectory. And I will say this, you got some pretty big minds out there. And I showed you the Wharton School of Business out of the University of Penn. I've talked about uh, a lot of different studies out there that have found that you're going to have the Fed actually get too restrictive. You're going to see the Fed go too far. And that leads into some concerns that a lot of people have in 2023. I also touched on what it's really going to take to slow down the inflation and actually go have it go backwards for the overall. And this is the global economy and everything. Now you're hearing, like I just showed you, we'll, we'll throw it up again. Certain areas are starting to drop and some of them are actually becoming deflationary. Now at the end of it, uh, the five regions, and they talk about different things. Right here is the one I, I like. Uh, and you got, according to Lee, inflation is cooling quickly. And we got 42% of CPI components are declining from recent highs equals deflation, Lee said, adding that five of the nine U.S. regions saw outright deflation in July on a month-over-month -month basis. So July compared to June, deflation. Then we have additionally leading inflation indicators like used auto prices. Anybody out there trying to buy a car? Man, the prices are ridiculous. Airfares, real estate suggests many other components of CPI could start falling outright. With that happening, and I think housing should eventually start to drop as uh, you're seeing rates move higher. We're getting into the slowing part of the season. Uh, we're going to watch that as well. Airfares, real estate, all that stuff, the auto prices, 
We'll see how it goes. Digging into actual components, Lee highlighted the commodity prices like gas, lumber, and wheat are falling like a rock, especially lumber. I talked about that in the video. Uh, as are electronics, meat like chicken and beef, and clothing. So we're seeing a lot of goods and services out there starting to drop. That tells us what? Well, that inflation could start to come down naturally. And we know that the Fed can only do so much. They can't get out there and fix everything just by themselves. That I don't think people understand, but the good news is it is starting to unwind. It is finally, as they always say, going to become transitory. And I still remember all the people making videos on transitory. We did not see that happening. We thought it was actually gonna be stuck. It's gonna last and it did. And then it's funny to watch the same people who scream transitory, then coming out acting like they thought uh, we we always said it was gonna, it was it was not going to stay. It was it, it was going to be here for a long time. And it's like the the different things. It just makes you shake your head. Uh, the flip flopping everywhere is just very frustrating when it comes to trying to help people out there and everything else. Walmart owns Sam's Club raises annual membership fee for first time in nine years. Do you need anything more than this, people, to understand that inflation is not going away when Sam's Club raises that that membership? And what do we got? $45 to $50 for club members and $100 to $110 for uh, the plus member. And yes, I am a plus member. I know there's a lot of Costco fans out there. We have them over in our Patreon. Salute to all you. I don't, I've never been in a Costco. I never even had an opportunity to be in a Costco or I'd go check it out. I put it down to this. Let's make sure we got a close up of this. It comes down Sam's Club versus Costco. Let me know down below which one is the best. I'm going to tell you, uh, I always judge it based on the hot dog and soda price and how good the hot dog actually is. And so I know over at Sam's Club, I like to stop in there for a lunch. I, I think it's like a buck fifty, uh, but you can go in there and get a huge hot dog, all you can drink soda and enjoy it. And I'm telling you what. To me, that is one of the greatest deals. I think it used to be 99 cents back in the day, but that I understand. I don't, I'm not even sure if it was. It may have been a buck fifty. It's just, it's a great deal. And I don't want to see them change that, but you never know. And so let me know what is the best down below. I like I said, never been in a Costco uh yet, but I hear nothing but good things about it. So we see that price going up. That's your natural price. All right. So that's jumping a little over 10%. Fed likely needs to push interest rates above 3.5%. I showed this yesterday or this morning. And this was from the Fed, New York Fed president, close ally. And it's good to get these things. So it says Fed likely needs to push interest rates above 3.5% and hold them there until 2024. Well, that was yesterday. Check this out. Fed's Mester sees benchmark rate above 4% and no cuts at least through 2023. Now, don't sleep on this. This is out of Cleveland. Let's be honest. One of the best cities in the world, Cleveland, go Browns. And we will see how that goes. Cleveland Federal Reserve President Loretta Mester, I believe I'm saying that right, said Wednesday she sees benchmark interest rates rising above 4% by early next year. And then she anticipates the rate increases to slow economic growth, which she sees running well above 2%. Okay, so here you go. Put them all together. You got her saying it's going to hit 4%. You got, uh, here we go, above 3.5. So above 3.5, 4%. You're right in that range, about a half a percent. And she says we don't see any cuts next year. But yet I believe that the markets were pricing in 50 basis point cuts. And I'm going to tell you, you can't trust just one article. Take my word on this. So even if I'm showing you this and you're like, well, what's that mean, Mo? What, what, what's going on with this? The Fed doesn't even know what it's going to do in the next six months. That I can promise you. They have ideas of what they would like to do, but it's going to be dependent on the data. And so right now, I think you're going to see inflation come out as getting much better. Hopefully, that's what we're going to see for August. And that'll be the next moment that we see once we get that in September. We'll see that push the markets up. And then you're going to have the October, November run from back to school. You got back to school. You got a lot of people shopping for Christmas. And I think you just see a record amount of savings that's out there for corporations and, and regular people coming out and getting spent up a little bit. And that's going to help spur it. And plus, you got all the money being spent by the government, which is a good thing in terms of pushing the market up. And then once we get into January and then student loans come due, people paying for holidays and stuff like that, we had all the spending. 
that's when we're going to start to see the hits. And then, of course, the Fed uh, running down that balance sheet twice as much as they planned uh, back. I shouldn't say as they planned. They're going they're doubling up to 95 billion a month starting in September. That's going to start taking a bigger hit as well. And so I think all these and it sometimes there's a delay effect on the markets for some of this. And so that's why I'm kind of watching late December into January as the flipping point, if you will. But until then, until then, and I know not everybody watches the video. They just watch the thumbnail. Uh, I have been very, very straightforward here. I'm bullish. I think the market's going to run up. We're going to have a nice green period. Call it a Santa Claus rally. Call it whatever you want. But I believe it's going to start a little earlier. And we'll have to, we might have to wait until September, uh, the meeting in September for the Fed to get out. And then a couple of day or two or three later. But then I believe we will have that run. And it should be a solid run, a good month or two. Uh, I'm thinking at least two months of good green, solid. And everybody's going to be happy again. And then we're going to have to sit down and have a long, a long conversation. Now, we'll see if we can get up to that 4,800 level in the S&P 500. Now that we're back down there a little bit, I'm going to say this. This is an opportunity for long-term investors. When you see these markets dropping, the market, ask yourself this in 10 years, are these markets going to be way higher? And I think everybody can absolutely agree that, yes, everything that's problems right now will be taken care of by then, and the markets will recover and we'll see growth. Uh, remember, China and U.S. have been working to make sure the audit deal's fine. I know that there was an article I read today that the U.S. is going over to start auditing. They picked, I believe it was JD.com and Alibaba, and that's good news. Neo will be in there eventually as well. And so we're going to see a lot of good things happening, and I do expect good things. Remember, in the last piece of positive, your hopium for the day, here you go. Remember, uh, when the Fed ends that cycle, which it could, you know, they could stop raising rates in early to mid 2023, this is what you expect. Uh, the the S&P 500 will bottom before, and then over the next 12 months, look at the average gain, 25%. So we got to get through this rough day, these rough days, but then expect big gains. Will we go above and beyond? Well, we never had this much money spent before. And so when I see this tightening cycle and money being spent, remember that effect could amplify the gains over the next 12 months after we get to that point. And so I'm kind of excited about this and we'll find out how it goes. This is a pretty cool article too. I was going to add it, but I, you know, let's share this. Eight stocks turned 10 grand into 94,000 in eight months. And basically what they were saying is that you had to, I can't even barely see it here. You had to take the 10 grand every month and the money you made, move it into the next stock and you see what they did. So if you were lucky enough to pick these eight, it's like going to a horse race and track and picking the eight winners, but every, uh, in eight different races. So these are eight different months. If you put all the money in, you could have $94,000 if you bet on the best stock every month. Any of them you recognize? Of course you do. Uh, Twitter, that was a good one. Dollar General. Who would have thought Dollar General would have came out and just crushed it? But they did. Enphase Energy and, of course, EPM Systems, Solar Edge, Hall Halliburton. Good stocks. It's not like you never heard of them. So this is why I like diversification. You see no stock in here repeated. And, so, and you can see the different sectors out there. It wasn't like energy one every time. Info, uh, Infotech, industrials, communication services, materials, consumer, discretionary, Infotech, again, utilities. So Infotech making, making the rounds, hit twice. Utilities, I told you before, is a decent one uh, for recession. So that's starting to get some attention. So don't sleep on that. There you go. I thought that was interesting stuff. So if you haven't done it, make sure you get the free cash. Don't, leave, don't let the free money on the table, family. I'm telling you, uh, hit the Moo Moo link down below. Put the $100 in. Have your spouses out there, your husband or wives, hit that with you and your kids have them signing up if they're 18 or older, parents, whatever. Everybody can get some free stocks out of this and have some fun. And this is one of the best deals I've ever seen. Nine free stocks for putting $100 or more in, but you got to use my link to get it. If you don't, you don't get it. All right. And then, of course, I do have the Weeble link down there. Click that, put a dollar in. You can get up to 12 free stocks. That's right. Only a dollar. And then uh, come on over to the Patreon. Join me over there. We're talking. We have the private Discord, thousands of members, and you can see all the portfolios. I appreciate you stopping by. Now let's get out there and make some money.